six Africans, or people of African descent, likely enslaved, were buried on Anson Street. Fast forward to 2013. Dr. Adeo Funian founded the Gulf Society with the intent to rescue neglected African and African-American burial grounds. If you did not know, over 80 burial sites of Africans and African-Americans have been identified on the Charleston Peninsula. During the excavations for the foundations of the enlarged Charleston Hill Yard Center, the 36 people who had been buried on Anson Street were disinterred. The Gala Society took stewardship of the remains of the individuals now referred to as the ancestors. And after community discussions, initiated a rigorous and multi-method scientific study. Now that study used archeological, osteological, dental, isotopic, and genomic methods to understand more about the individuals buried on Anson Street. In 2019, the 36 bodies of the ancestors were reinterred in a vault on George Street, near where they had been buried in a ceremony organized by the Bell Society. In 2021, the results of the osteobiographical analysis of the ancestors were published in the American Journal of Physical Anthropology. And also, in 2021, Stephen Hayes creates a design for a fountain to serve as the marker. Brenda Lauterbach agrees to chair the effort to raise funds for the memorial. And Nigel Redden agrees to become project leader. We will hear from them during this program tonight. In 2022, the Samuel Freeman Charitable Trust, the Spalding Paolozzi Foundation, Denny's and the Wolverine Worldwide Foundation announced their support of the project. The city of Charleston and the state of South Carolina allocate funds for the memorial. Wells Fargo Foundation announces that it will be a founding partner of the Anson Burial Memorial. In 2023, this year, Lachelle Oubre and Joanna Gilmore of the Anson Street African Burial Ground identified 36 volunteers whose hands are molded by Stephen Hayes to be cast in bronze of the fountain. And I know you can see many of you are in the back. One of the youngest participants, one of the youngest hand models, Mr. Jaden Hill, right here. You'll get a chance to go around and meet him. I would like to encourage you to walk by the outdoor area where the memorial will be built. It is visibly marked for you. Uh, it will be marked and flagged uh, during this event sometime this evening, so please do make sure that you do walk by and, um, and see that. Uh, and here we are tonight, 2023, October 26th, I believe, is uh, today's date, right? So far, we have received 900,000 plus from foundations, local government, and private donors. Our overall fundraising goal for the Anson African Burial Memorial is over $1.2 million. And hopefully and prayerfully, your presence here tonight will help us to reach that goal. And in fact, inside your program is an insert that's displaying all the different donation opportunities for you. So please don't throw that away. Don't roll it up and stick it somewhere. There's some very important information inside for you. But right now, I'd like to bring up a very busy man about town. In fact, I spent about an hour and a half with him last night at the Tulsa Bureau Forum <laughs> at Greater St. Clouguet. I mean, Mayor John Tecklenburg with our welcome and remarks this evening. This was our moderator last night at, um, at the Forum du Jour. We yeah. call it the Forum du Jour. We have a forum every day. <laughs> Got another one tonight. So, um, thank you all for coming this evening and for supporting the Anson African Burial Memorial that we're going to have. It's going to be beautiful, y'all, number one. It's such an addition to the public realm of Charleston. And, um, oh my God, it's so good to see you. Um, and, and I got to tell y'all, it's it's a, it's a personal story for me and many here, including the Gullah Society, who um, was so involved early on, and my dear friend, our dear friend, Dr. O, who has departed now. And um, 
You know, I became, became friends with Dr. O before I uh, ran for mayor and got elected. And it wasn't shortly afterwards, Dr. O called me. He said, John, do you know that the city's sitting on the remains in a storage shed somewhere of the 36 who were uh, discovered at the Gilliard site? And, and, you know, I had followed the news, but I didn't know specifically what the city had done. And I asked about them, and sure enough, we had them in little boxes in a storage container, West Ashley, at, a, at a, one of those uh, pay storage places. And um, the remains were in there of each individual. And Dr. O said, you know, we have an incredible opportunity to do DNA testing really find out something about these individuals. You know, maybe even how old they were, um, what, what gender they might be, and even what part of Africa they might have come from. And, and to verify, in fact, they were all of African descent, and they all were, but one was a Native American descent. And y'all, it's an amazing story, but, but as this effort um, continued to evolve, to have a memorial, not just for this one site, but for all the African burial grounds in our city. Some we know about, some we, we don't even know about. And we're finding out as we go. And we're collecting some sample of earth from each of those sites to be included with this site. So it's even more than just the 36, but a memorial to our ancestors. Who, who were brought here more than un unjustly and who, who, um, who helped build this low country and this, this, this colony at the time, the city, um, a tribute to them um, and to our ancestors. So when, when I, we did the libation out here on, on uh, George Street in 2019 before Dr. O, I don't know how, uh, a good many of y'all might have been here. It, it was a moving spiritual experience, y'all. I mean, it truly was. And um, we, 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 we felt the spirits of our ancestors. And to have a memorial like that here in Charleston that can help evoke that connection to the past is, is just remarkable. And then, as you think about the context of this area of the city, including the International African American Museum, the, the trees that we planted out in front of the gay yard uh, in honor of, of those who died and, and survivors of Mother Emanuel, the Susie Jackson Memorial Garden on the other side of the library, Mother Emanuel itself, you weave all that together and all those stories together, y'all, and it tells a remarkable part of our history, our Charleston history, our United States history, a, a history of humanity that, that uh, begs to continue to be told for generations to come. So I, I just view this as being so uh, important. And I know 1.2 million may sound like a, a lot of money, but y'all, um, and I, I thank Nigel and Brenda for their incredible leadership on pulling all this together, but it's important that we do this right. It's important that we do this first class, and that's what this is. It's, it's an amazing piece of art. Uh, it's thoughtful. It's, it's uh, commemorative of our history for, for all the right reasons. And I can't, I'm uh, talking too long already, I know, but I'm very, very um, uh, passionate. Uh, as I said, this is uh, personal for me. And, and I urge you all, and I, I'm sure many of you have been donors already to the effort. If, if not, it's time to get on board. If you've given once already, um, think about another commitment to get us over the top and finished. Uh, regardless, we're moving forward um, with making this happen, and and um, I couldn't be prouder of the work that Brenda and Nigel and all of you have done to 
make this possible. God bless you. And of course, uh, Mayor Zuckerberg did mention something that I wanted to mention personally. He mentioned it being a, a, a spiritual experience. When I was asked to, to be the MC for tonight and found out a little bit more about uh, the memorial, I immediately felt that spiritual connection. It's something that you can't describe. This, the hair kind of rises on your, your skin just a little bit, like it's doing right now. You tear up just a little bit, and you have no control over it. I believe that's the ancestors. Acknowledging that we are acknowledging them, and they will be at peace. But our next speakers tonight are instrumental in the Ants and Af African Burial Memorial Project. They are Denny's chairperson, Brenda Louderback, and former general director of Spalato Festival USA, now project leader for the Ants and African Burial Memorial, Nigel Redding. Thank you, Tessa. That was uh, a very nice introduction. And thank you, Mayor Tecklenburg. Uh, yes. That was a, a really very beautiful discussion of, of how important this project is and uh, we have so many people to thank and certainly Mayor Tecklenburg is high on that list as are so many of your staff members and the people at the City of Charleston have been really wonderful to work with and have been extremely supportive of this project and I think you've set the tone for them. I wish I could mention everyone's name. I will mention Jason Crossberg because you're right in front of me, Jason. <laughs> who's head of the Parks Department, uh, who is, has been very, very important in making the project different and better yes. so that it, it, it has improved with his uh, comments and um, his, his, his passion for it. Are we now? now we're, we're, we're switching off. We're, we're, we're going back and forth. So we haven't quite figured out how to do that. But, um, I would have to agree, and I want to thank uh, so many people, and uh, we won't be able to list all of them tonight, but I do, and you'll hear from him a little later, I want to thank Otis Rollins, who is the uh, head of the Wells Fargo Foundation, and he has stepped up Wells Fargo big time to be our founding partner. Uh, we had a vision when we started this, to raise most of the money for this memorial. Uh, before we went to the public. Uh, we wanted to make sure that um, the contributions that were going to be made from the city, which the mayor and the city has been phenomenal, the state, um, which has been also found funds coming in through there, and many corporations, I'm going to name a few, but it always takes someone to step up first and to give that amount of money. And that is what Otis and Wells Fargo did. So I want to I mentioned the state of South Carolina, and again, you'll hear from Otis in a few minutes, but um, I mentioned the state of South Carolina, and that was important because um, as we talk about the city, but we know uh, the state of South Carolina and the history that we have here too. But monies were given from the state, and we were very appreciative of that. And um, we also are, want to recognize the Samuel Greenman Charitable Trust, the Spalding um, Foundation, Denny's Corporation, which I represent, and uh, Wolverine Worldwide Foundation. Uh, I happen to be on the board of that too. And when you can go to your companies and they know that you're doing good work in the cities that you're in, it means a lot when they support it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to turn it over to um, Nigel. Right now. We'll be back. I'll try not to do this, uh, make it too long, but I, there are, there was a committee that the mayor formed that uh, helped decide that this was a worthwhile project and that we should uh, work with um, Stephen Hayes as the artist, and I, I want to thank them. Maxine Smith, who I think is here, also put together a group of people that were very, very important in establishing community support uh, for this. Uh, there, uh, Lachey Oubre and uh, Joanna Gilmore, who are the uh, who are over there, well, at least uh, uh, well, are the people behind the Anson. Let's see, I've got to get this right. The Anson Street African Burial Ground. No, Ground Burial. No, anyway, <laughs> it, it, it's the sort of successor organization to um, the um, Gala Society. And uh, Joanna and Lachey have 
found the 36 volunteers, many of whom are here tonight. And I would encourage those of you who don't know, who aren't volunteers, or who are volunteers, uh, hand volunteers, to talk to some of the people who have lanyards around, the blue lanyards around their necks. Um, Gus Hall was uh, saying how he was, how moving it was for him to be the person who was uh, chosen to represent a particular uh, member of the 36. Um, I, I also want to thank Darren Goss, who I think is here, uh, from, from the uh, Coastal Community Foundation, which has uh, made it possible for us to actually get private donations. I mean, we, we are not a non-profit organization, and the Coastal Community Foundation has been um, really um, very important to us. There are also a number of people here who did pro bono work on the project. Steve Dudash, uh, early on, uh, drew the, 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 uh, um, the um, model for the precinct that we have, where the fountain is positioned and so on. Uh, Jen Hayes uh, from Thomas and Hutton was the, uh, has been an engineer and has worked really hard on this. Uh, Evan Brandon, uh, who's not here, but Wade Alexander, who is from Outdoor Spatial Design, also contributed their services. And then, um, finally, uh, there's another group that I should thank, because we're in their house. Uh, <laughs> the Charleston Gilliard Center, uh, and Lisa Frankel and her staff, her staff has been fabulous. But Lisa has been uh, really extremely supportive of this, and you will hear more from us. So thank you all. Thank you, Nigel. And um, as I said, I'm delighted to welcome you all to all the supporters of the Gibson African Barrel Memorial to our building and to our campus. And I guess we're, I just want to say we're even more proud uh, that the campus will be home for this stunning memorial, which is so significant historically and important for our community. Um, we're looking forward to this monument enhancing our neighborhood, our campus, our community. But we're even more energized by the charge that we've been given to ensure that the memorial remains alive and active in the minds of the students of our community. The Gilliards serve over 25,000 students every single year through our curriculum-based education program that includes our main stage productions in the hall behind you um, and accompanying lesson plans and workshops. We have an artist in residence program, master classes, panels, teacher professional development programs, and, and summer camps. And we're proud to announce today that the Gilliard Center and community partners will be creating a complementary education program with, for the memorial that will ensure that the history of the site, the period, and the story of the unmarked burial grounds remain present within our community. Over the past two seasons, we've been working hard to recognize and elevate untold stories and histories from, the, from African Americans and Africans here in our community through the arts. We envision the Gilliard and the arts that we present as a spark for conversation and deeper engagement with issues that matter most to our community. Hopefully some of you have attended recently the um, theatrical production um, honoring the legacy of Charles hero Robert Smalls earlier this month. Um, over 6,000 students attended that production. And in the future, those students would have access to a curriculum guide that would allow them to engage with the history represented by the memorial and how it relates to the story that they saw on the stage. And this is just one example. We think that the program can be seamlessly integrated into our arts education program, and we're just really energized to be a part of this. So thank you so much for involving us. Thanks so much for being here. And um, we feel really proud to have this exciting memorial that you're all supporting here on our campus. Wow. Now, the person who's been tasked with creating the concept
I might have to like sleep on it, like think about it. I'm always working, like I'm working in my sleep and thinking about things. <laughs> so uh, just talking back and forth with Nigel and hearing uh, all the information that you all learn about the people and doing all the DNA samples, let me think, how can I make this story timeless? You know, you know this is a, a history that's not untold, it's untold. You know, like you said, they were buried at night. You know, they said they just forget about the people right overnight after they buried them. So, hearing that they had the DNA and they know about what sex and what age the people were when they were buried and everything, how do I represent that and make it being represented for generations to come? So that's why I came up with casting the hands off the people, uh, uh, people with the same age or uh, the same lineage. And what do the hands represent? Um, so the hands represent the people who were buried there. You know, they, they represent the 36 bodies that were found. Um, they, they represent their history that was untold. So they represent the next generation to come. And speaking of generations, you had a wide range of, of ages participating uh, in this project. And I acknowledged young Jaden uh, a little bit earlier at the start of this film. What was that experience? Like through your lens when they were doing the hand Well, just to be able to see the smiles on everybody's faces and, and, and to see the pain and the joy that they, that they went through uh, in that process. I mean, it's like a 15 minute process, but it's still painful at the same time. Um, so to see the joy in these people's eyes to say that they represent their ancestors. Um, and to be able to connect these people, you know, multi generational. So, uh, was, was something really powerful for me. Uh, I was truly happy just to be a part of this and to, to bring this uh, social to life. And what is your hope that, of course, uh, we want our, our local people here in town to see the finished memorial? But for those who come from out of state, you know, we have tourists coming in and out of here every day, hour, week, month. What would you like for them to take away? Um, well, I don't think we're just thinking about the histories that I've told here, you know, like, to know about all of these mass graves that are around Charleston and, and to use this, this fountain as a way to tell, talk about these histories. You know, um, it's to be able to put, based on putting the, the history of their shoes in the building. Understand, you know, to be a part of to see this, but then also for them to go back and research this uh, history. Well, Stephen, thank you so much. We thank you in advance. Uh, we know that it's going to be beautiful. We have a chance to do it. We can't go with this. We can't go with it. On the platform of the Rocky Easels, we do invite you to please stop by. And of course, we get a chance to, uh, at the end, mingle up with Stephen. Don't keep him too long. So, a lot of folks, I'm sure you might have some questions comments that you'd like to make, and also again, you will be able to meet some of the hand models uh, that are here uh, this evening. We must take the time now to acknowledge uh, the people who have been with the Anson African Burial Memorial Project from its inception. That will be one of our founding partners, uh, and that will be Mr. Otis Robin. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mr. Otis. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be very brief uh, because uh, tonight is not about Wells Fargo. Um, tonight is about the community coming together and as a member of the community, though I don't personally live here, though Brenda is trying hard, um, um, Wells Fargo as a corporation is a member of this community. And, and we found it important to step up as a member of the community. I'm not responsible uh, today for, um, for the fundraising pitch, um, and so I am in no way going to try to uh, move any of you to do what you need to do um, and, uh, and donate, <laughs> because that would be improper. <laughs> I'm here representing Will Fargo, and, um, and so I'm excited in that role. And so I am not going to speak about how important it is as a community <laughs> for all the members of the community to step up, not just with their hearts, not just with their words, but with their cash and credit <laughs> um, to contribute to the 
legacy of the community. When the mayor said, as he spoke, when he said, our ancestors, I got a little McClint, right? Um Because I think the mistake that often happens is you hear folks talk about when you're recognizing uh, African American historical things, they'll say, well, your ancestors. So if we're seeing things that uh, pay tribute to another part of the tapestry that is America, we identify that piece. You notice he didn't say that. He said, this is about our, our ancestors, right? Um, and so Wells Fargo just thought it was crucial um, that as we think about our past, as we start to celebrate, understand, and embrace both the rough parts and the good parts, we help to shape a better future. So we're excited about the, the being a founding partner in this, but we're even more excited about those who follow us and write checks um, and donate. No, in no way would I, in this role, try to tell you that you should do that. <laughs> so thank you for the opportunity to, to, to speak on behalf of Wells Fargo. Thank you, actually, for the opportunity to put our money where our mouth is. Uh, and, and I hope all of you do the same. <laughs> You know, I told you guys that inside of your programs tonight, there was a very important insert in there, that's your donation opportunities. But to talk to you more about that and uh, encourage you just a little bit more, because I know this is a room of very giving people with big hearts. Um, it's been a lot of But the one thing that I do want to ask all of you is to really give with your heart because uh, this is such an important project for all of us and for generations we are going to be able to um, be proud of what we all have done. And it, it, money, not only money, money is important, but there have been so many people that have given us their time and their talents and their energy that too. So we want to say thank you to all of the people that have done that and will continue to do that. I do want to give another special thanks to our hand models. Um, I was there when they were casting the hands for one of the events and it was one of the most emotional uh, times that I had had that I had just to even see um, because I know in my heart the ancestors were there. They, they were definitely speaking to everyone that was involved in that. Uh, like I said, when we started this project, we had a vision to raise most of the money through the city, the state, corporations, uh, foundations, and we've been blessed to be able to do that. But we also have a bigger vision because we know that we want to put in place an endowment. And a lot of the money that you will give today will go for an endowment to make sure that this memorial stays pristine forever. The city will definitely help take care of it, no doubt. But we know that how we want it to be. And additionally, Lisa talked about the educational program. And that is something that I am very excited about because we know today in some of our schools, our kids aren't getting all the true history that they should. And we know Charleston has, uh, I always say, it has a rich and complicated history, but it has to be acknowledged. And if you speak truth, and you don't have to live there, but you have to acknowledge it. And kids have to understand the history. And what will happen through the funds that we'll be able to get from tonight and, and other events that we will have, it will ensure that we can put an educational program for kids when they come to see that memorial that will talk about those 36 ancestors and give them the respect that they deserve, but also the other mass graves and so many of our ancestors who have been buried that we don't know their names. We know the work they did for the city. We know the contributions that they made. So we need to recognize them too. So that's what we're gonna ask you to give with your heart. There are many opportunities on the donation form that is uh, here. And um, one thing that I'm hoping, because through a very generous anonymous donor, 
we got a $50,000 um, com uh, commitment that will match tonight. So for a wedding raise of $50,000, we're going to match that So please, um, open your hearts, open your wallets, make your commitments on this form. And again, I'd also like to thank uh, Darren and the um, Coastal Community Foundation for being the stewards of the money that will be coming in because that's a very important part um, of that we need. So thank you very much for that. So that's my pitch. Thank you. Please give yeah, and um, I know you will. 50,000, I'm sure we're gonna get matched tonight. All right, I hope you're inspired to come along this journey with us honoring these 36 ancestors with the completion of the Anson African Burial Memorial. I do want to mention as we get ready to close, we are blessed this evening to have a few of the hand models whose molded hands will become permanent pieces of the memorial. I know I mentioned one of our youngest hand models. I'd like to now uh, mention the oldest hand model that was used, Ms. Joanna Carrington Martin. If you can please raise your hand. And where are my other hand models? Who are here? Leave them up so people can see. They can have an opportunity to see with you about your experiences. And before you leave tonight, please be sure to take with you a program again that has all the necessary inserts with you. Any level, again, any level of support is appreciated. And lastly, be sure to tour the area where the memorial will be built and continue to enjoy the rest of the evening. I don't think I introduced myself earlier when we began. My name is Tessa Spencer. I'm with ABC News 4. It's been a pleasure to serve.